What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Hello, 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 beautiful people. Yes, we are back. And we just want to say shout to all of you guys for subscribing to our uh, YouTube page. And if you subscribe, we're picking one person a week. Doesn't matter if you're a new subscriber or old subscriber. And we're sending you cool stuff, whether it's uh, coffee mugs or wine glasses or socks or Casey Crew hats or t-shirts whatever it may be we just want to say thank you for rocking with us and subscribing to our youtube page uh, also um i also want to say shout out to everybody that i've seen at all star had a great time in atlanta and this week i'll be back in atlanta but we're doing real estate so if you want to learn more about real estate possibly purchase your first home make sure you join me in atlanta i think there's like 50 tickets left so get your tickets we can't have a lot of people because of the pandemic so i want to see you guys and if you live in the new york new jersey area in May, we're doing one in New Jersey at the Meadowlands Expo Center. Perfect Mother's Day gift. So I want to see you guys there. Now, uh, let's get the podcast started. Um, first, um, I'm trying to give away a couple of things. Actually, two things I want to give away. Okay. Uh, one is Brooklyn. The other is Jackson. I'm going <laughs> to give them two away. <laughs> what are you talking about? I am tired of sleeping uh, and not getting my cuddle time. The other night, we were watching out, you know, Gia and I have date night. Like we tell you, each and every Monday we watch Bachelor. So we're, we're cuddled up watching Bachelor. And here comes Brooklyn right in between. Okay, she comes in between. Then I realized that my cuddle time, I lost. Because now she's cuddling Brooklyn and rubbing Brooklyn's back. I'm like, what about my back? My back feels funny. <laughs> right? I can tell you were tight. I was a little tight. Mm -hmm. A little tight. And I don't know where the shift happened. Like for a long time, I was the daddy. Like Brooklyn was all over me and all I wanted was my daddy and kiss my daddy. I want to sleep next to my daddy. And now all of a sudden it's like, they don't even say good morning to me anymore. It's like, hey, ma, good morning, ma, love you, ma. And then they run out the room. I'm sitting there like, nigga, this is my bed too. <laughs> Not according to them. Not according to them. They're like, no, this it's is mom's, mom's bed, bro. Bed. Yeah. So um, the kids be lovey-dovey with you. Uh-huh. I don't like it. <laughs> but you guys understand, like right now, there's like this thing where they're fighting to prove who loves me more. And they literally get almost to a point of like knockdown, drag out about who loves me more. Mm -hmm. Like, I love her more. No, I love her more. No, she's the best to me. No, she's even better to me. No, she's mommy's everything. London, not London, Brooklyn has new G to this week. What? This week, she told me that she wanted me for her birthday. I heard Did you that. hear that? Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> I just want you for my birthday. I said, what else do you want for your birthday, sweet pea? Just you, mommy. You're all it takes to make me happy. I was like, ah, you little sweet baby. <laughs> well. <laughs> then Jackson was like, well, I want her for Mother's Day. Top that. <laughs> well, I told him yesterday that you were a witch. Did you really? Yeah, I said, mom's really a witch. <laughs> She's You're very so nasty jealous. and evil, so be careful. You were and they was so like, what? Jealous. I said, I said, let me ask you a question. Can witches swim? They was like, no. I said, ask mom if she can swim. Let's swim. <laughs> and you can't. Who said that witches can't swim? I don't know. I just made it up, but I know you can't swim. So I Who knew cares you if they something. can swim? They can fly. Can you fly? Let me see you fly. Then. I'm a witch, right? Motherfucker, fly. Okay. Fly, fly, motherfucker. Okay. But let's get the podcast started. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like everything comes from shows that we watch because, you know, that's part of our routine. We'll watch a show and then we'll just kind of dissect it and talk about what's going on in the show. And it's like mindless shows right. because typically I love the type of show where I have to figure things out because I thoroughly enjoy trying to figure out the end before it happens. And I'm really, really good at it. I can almost always tell you how a show is going to end, but that takes thinking and that takes, you know, so sometimes when I'm with Rashawn, we just need to let our hair down and have something that's just going to amuse and entertain us and laugh where we don't have to really do too much thinking. Right. So uh, this was Bling Empire. And on Bling Empire, uh, one of the women on Bling Empire, she really wants to get married to her fiance. They've been in. No, no to her boyfriend. To her boyfriend. Yeah. Right. She is. Uh, they have two kids together. She has two kids yeah. mm -hmm. and she wants to get married and he hasn't proposed. It's not because he doesn't have money because they filthy rich on that show. It's. He says it's a matter of luck and he wants to do it a certain year and a certain Did he time. Say that? Yeah. And oh, he I, said, I don't remember him saying that. And he said the pandemic stopped him from doing it. So it's something that he wants. 
That's that went said. over my head because no, I didn't see that. You might have fell asleep, or maybe he was cuddling one of the other kids. But, um, <laughs> that's what he said. I saw he gave her a promise ring. Yeah, promise not ring, not an engagement mm-hmm. ring. But see, that doesn't. That's that's BS. What he said. If what you're saying is correct, and I did in fact miss it, that's nonsense. Because okay, you may not want to get married this year or in the year of luck or however it was that they put it according to you. Mm -hmm. But why is that stopping you from proposing? We can have an engagement for whatever duration of time. Right. If you're not proposing, it's because you don't want to propose. Correct. So, so mm -hmm. we, um, alluded to this, I think two weeks ago on that particular podcast. And we said we were going to talk about it on the next podcast. We forgot. So we're talking about it now. Right. So we, uh, she decided to propose to him. So, uh, I guess in certain cultures, they celebrate the baby's hundredth day. Um, in the Chinese culture, the Asian culture, they, um, celebrate the baby's hundredth day. So they were having day. a hundredth day birthday party. And during the birthday party, uh, she got up to give a speech and she proposed to her boyfriend because she was tired of waiting. She was tired of waiting. Mm -hmm. So that came to the question, uh, how do you feel about proposal and what would, would you propose? Um, now I'll be honest in certain situations. Want me to answer first? You want to answer first? Sure. Go ahead. In certain situations, I don't mind a woman proposing to a man, honestly. Okay. Um, in that situation, I mind it. And I'm not judging. I don't know them. I'm just talking about the situation and I, I'll break it down why. He knows that you want to get married. He knows that you want a ring. He knows that you guys are married. and married. Well, he knows that you want to get married and he made an honest decision, a choice not to marry you. Um, you asking him is kind of like pushing him, forcing him where he doesn't want to get married. For what reason? I don't know, but he does it in that situation. I, I would be against it. Um, because obviously if he really wanted to marry, he would have asked her a long time ago. This is the second child that they have together. They live with each other. If he wanted to marry her, he would have popped the question a long time ago. There's reasons why he doesn't want to get married. I don't know why, but I think she knows that if she asked him on that stage with all those people around them, having two kids living with each other, he would not say no. And he didn't. In that situation, I'm against it. Now, if it's a situation where we're both dating and we're both feeling each other, we're seeing each other and that's how you feel. I don't have a problem with that, you know, but not forcefully doing it. Uh, I understand if he said, you know, maybe I'm broke. I don't have the money. I can't afford a ring right now. Uh, and I'm waiting to afford that ring. And maybe she has money and be like, look, I got my own ring. I don't need that. That's, that's, that is not what I want to do. I don't care about that. Then that's something differently, different. For instance, if, um, if I was proposing to you mm -hmm. and we just met and I wanted to get you a nice ring and I wanted to make it special and nice, and I really couldn't afford a ring. Uh, let's say I was saving and then a pandemic hit and you know, I lost work. I don't have the money. I might not want to get married or propose because I want to make it special. And I don't want to propose with a cubic zirconia, let's just say. But let's say you have money. Let's say you come from wealth or let's say you have a great job or let's say you have a great savings or whatever it may be. And you can afford a ring. You know, at that point, we're a team. And you might say, you know what? I want to take this stress from him. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to bust his ass to find a ring. I don't want him to to go drive himself crazy when that's not what I want or what I need. So let me propose to him and take that stress off of him because we still want the same end goal. I would not have a problem with that at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you, what do you think? Um, in your scenario, which I, one? The one that you just presented. Mm -hmm. I think that that's fine. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be me, but why not? Let's say we're dating and we've been dating for five, 10 years. I'm not getting down on a knee and proposing. She didn't get down on a knee. To no man. She didn't get down on a knee. She just said, what are you marrying? Um, like I said, in your scenario, uh, where money's a factor and she got it and he doesn't, and it comes from a place of not wanting to take the stress off of him, uh, not to, not put, excuse More me, wanting to take the stress off of him, mm -hmm. then yes. I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, but how do I put it? Um, 
that's typically not going to be the situation. Usually if a woman proposes, it's because she's fed up, she's waited long enough and it hasn't happened. And she wants to take the bull by the horns. There's something to be said for a woman that is strong enough and secure enough to do that. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying it couldn't be me. And the reason why is because um, tradition almost dictates that the man is the one to propose. Number one, I'm a traditional person um, and I would want that to be my situation. Um, If a man doesn't propose, I would assume that it's because he doesn't want to or because he either does not want to marry me or because he is unsure. And I, if I'm sure, I wouldn't propose and put him in that predicament where he feels as though he has to say yes because he was put on the spot Mm -hmm. or because he doesn't want to hurt my feelings. If I'm to marry someone, I would want it to be because they completely, totally, and utterly want to be with me for the rest of their lives. They have conviction in that feeling and they want to be the one to take the bull by the horns and make that proposal. If he doesn't do that, then I'm left feeling that he doesn't have the feelings that I believe that it takes to begin a marriage. So um, I would wait for as long as I'd be willing to wait. And then beyond that, I would have to go. I would have to part ways. You know, my problem with that is, is you look at all these women, right? All women. They want to be equal, right? I don't want to be equal. Most women. And I don't think all women want to be equal. I think a lot of women say that they want to be equal, but when you start dissecting what equality means, I don't think that they want to be completely equal. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think that women want to be equal in the workspace, as far as pay and opportunities, and as far as respect and the things um, that matter in society. But in a relationship, I don't want to be equal. No, I don't want to open my own door. You want to be equal. I want you to take out the trash. I want you to mow the grass. I don't want to shovel snow. I want you to shovel snow. I don't want to do any of those things whatsoever. I want you to do certain things because you are a man and there are certain things that I am more than happy to be responsible for because I am a woman. No, 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 no. And I'm not saying that that is the way that it should be. I'm not saying that that is the right way. I'm saying that that is Gia's way. No, no, but I want it to be equal. Cool. Next time the alarm goes off, I'm going to give you the gun and I'm going to say, go downstairs and see what's going on. Uh, <laughs> next, time exactly. there's, there's, next time there's some snow downstairs, I'm like, baby, shovel the snow. I don't want to feed the dog. I'm going to say, baby, take the car, get an oil change. I don't want to take the cars for car washes. Baby, take the cars to the car wash. Baby, nope. walk to the mailbox and get the mail. Baby, I don't want to take the tray off of the bed. That baby, take the tray off <laughs> we, the bed. We have this thing, right, <laughs> where... There are just certain roles. There are are a lot of um, occasions where we eat dinner in bed and we have these breakfast trays, if you will. And we use the breakfast trays for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. um, And that's what we do. And usually this might be TMI, but we're naked. and We're eating dinner in bed with our reality shows on television. And when it's time to clear the trays, it's Rashawn's job to clear the trays Mm -hmm. because I just don't want to get out of the bed naked. And I'm usually chilly, even if it's 80 degrees in our room, I just don't like to do it. So he does it. So in exchange, I am in control of the remote because he hates to be in control of the remote. He doesn't want to mute the the TV when the kids walk in. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to change the channel. If we miss something, he doesn't want to rewind it. He doesn't want to fast forward it. He doesn't want to choose what we're watching. He doesn't want to flip flop between regular cable TV and Apple TV. He doesn't want to search for what we're going to watch Mm -hmm. on Netflix. He wants all of that to be in my control. And? And I rub his back. That's right. Is that what you're going to say? So in exchange for bringing the trays up, taking them off the bed, bringing them down. And you guys know he makes breakfast and things like that. I gladly rub his back. So when we're watching TV, I am in full back rubbing, butt rubbing mode. That's right. And, so, 
and no more of that. Now you're going to start taking the trays down because you want to be you want to be equal. I don't. Want, I, I very clearly said that I have no desire to be equal. I believe that there are for me disclaimer for me mm-hmm. gender roles in a relationship. Um, there are just things that I don't want to be like, okay, yeah, we're equal. So I'm going to open the door for you. I will never open the door for you. No, you will equal. never expect it. No, we're it's equal. just not, it's just things that I, fact, I want to be treated in a chivalrous way. Nope. I want to feel like a lady all of the time and I will not get down on a knee and propose to no man at no time, never, ever. I mean, I get what you're saying. I, I disagree. I think there are some times where it can happen and it won't look as bad and it won't feel a certain way. But in her case, I didn't like that. I just like you made the dude do it. Listen, they I don't know if it was the editing or if it really depicted what happened on that stage where she proposed. But he looked hella awkward, hella surprised, hella what do I do? Because I don't want to say yes. I mean, there was that like calm over the audience and it felt strained, but then he, um, made up for all of that and said the right things. I think he might've said that, you know, maybe he's the lucky one or something, um, to imply that it's his privilege to accept her proposal and there's nothing he'd rather do or blah, blah, blah. So he made up for all of the awkwardness that we were feeling as viewers. And I think it's because he doesn't want to get married, at least not right now. Furthermore, he didn't even, he doesn't even want to get engaged. Right. That's the impression that I got. So she put him on the spot. So you want to get married under those circumstances by pressuring somebody, putting them on the spot where mm-hmm. they have to say yes. No, you want someone to do something because it's what they want with all of their heart. And that's how you go into a marriage the right, the right way, you know, feeling as though we're, we both want this. You proposed and damn it to hell, I said yes. Right. You know, so. We, we'd love to hear what you guys think. You can email us, thecaseycrew at gmail.com or leave a comment or whatever you think. Guys and women, women, would you propose to your man? Guys, how would you feel if your woman proposed to you? Let's talk about it. Uh, email us. I would love to hear what you guys got to say. Yes. All right. Well. I just want to say that this podcast is not going to be as long as usual. Let me tell you why. I just got back from Atlanta and I'm heading back to Atlanta because I have my, uh, what do I have? My seminar. That's right. My seminar going down in Atlanta. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets now, but let's get to the email of the week. Here we go. Ah. This is a good one. Hey, my loves. I hope you guys are well. I pray this email makes it to the podcast as I need your opinions ASAP. Where do I begin? Well, I'll start from where I am now. I have finally let go and ended my relationship with my ex-boyfriend of four years. Our relationship was a teeny weeny bit toxic, but we're so on and off. He is white. I am black. I fell in love with him at first conversation and he fell in love shortly afterwards and we began our relationship. We were polar opposites, not only physically, but as individuals, and I loved it. He was super expressive, sensitive, protective, and an open book. Well, I wasn't naturally, but he brought this out of me in the end. I was very patient, understanding, affectionate. He didn't have these qualities either, but developed it as time went on. Romantically, we were extremely compatible. By that, I mean our sex was amazing, emotional, and physical attraction was on 10 all the time. But we were too different to sustain a long lasting friendship relationship. For example, we lacked deep conversations at times because we had interest in different things, music, food, life goals, etc. I'm a Virgo like envy, so I'm quite chilled. I'm a homebody. I am very much always about business and looking for the next opportunity. He, on the other hand, is a Pisces. He doesn't plan his life. He pretty much goes where the wind takes him. He's a social butterfly and looks for all types of distractions around him, including drinking socially, going to bars, drugs, etc. I know we didn't have a future together because of these differences, but we all but we were like magnets. Every time we would break up, we'd be pulled right back together because none of us wanted to let go, despite the fact that we knew we weren't going to work. We were good communicators and could laugh off anything we hated about us. We could laugh off anything we hated about each other and our relationship. No one was ever a victim. We always knew we had ourselves to blame as we stopped each other from moving on in life. 
Going back to us being pulled back together, this always seemed to happen around birthdays and special occasions, including Christmas and New Year's. And this would always lead up to us somehow being in each other's lives again. So his birthday is coming up and I'm finally in a good place where I no longer feel that pull towards him. I'm happy to be single and enjoying the peace. However, I am conflicted whether I should wish him a happy birthday or not, since I still have love for him, but I'm no longer in love with him. I want to do this because it's a way of expressing that he was appreciated. He was always good to me to a fault. I didn't express this before. We decided to end things for good. But I am conflicted because this always is the point at which things can go either way. I'd love to know what your opinions are. Do you think you should wish your ex a happy birthday? Do you think you can make it work with someone who is completely different from you or you or your interests? What are the deal breakers? In case Gia needs more context, because she always does. <laughs> we met our families and friends, so we're quite invested in each other's lives. We celebrated all holidays together. We did not live together. I lived at home with my family and he lived alone. We lived five minutes away from each other, so I would often be there 80% of the time. I was 21 when I met him and he was 27. I'm now 25 and he's 31. Yes, we did compromise to engage in what we both like. Uh, example, I went out to the football games with him to cheer him on and his team. And he supported me in all my business ventures. He was my biggest cheerleader. Thank you guys. Send a love from the UK. Hmm. So they broke up. So there was no one big thing that broke them up. Yeah, they probably just were into different things and they probably just moved away from each other. You know, this is one of those rare times where I don't know if I agree with the emailer. What do you mean, what part? Everything that she said about him and their relationship, well, almost everything was glowing. It seems to be everything that you want. In a relationship, the one big thing that seemed um, as though it would be the wedge between them that I'm thinking might have been the catalyst that broke them up is that he's more, you know, let's see where this life takes me. And she's more deliberate about where she wants to end up. Oh, also the social butterfly, the drugs and alcohol. He didn't say what drugs or what yeah, it was. Yeah, but she didn't say that that was... She just says she's not in that invested in that life. She's more of a homebody. He's more of an outside body. It doesn't seem like she's into that. So, I mean, that could be it as well. But, I, you know, I just mm. feel like in this world, people look for their soulmate. They look for somebody yeah. they, that they can be compatible with and laugh things off. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say this. Uh, I'm sorry, you answered. I'll let you answer first. That's okay. You can go ahead. I don't mind. I would say this. I would say when it comes to relationships like that, if you really want out, like really, really want out and not just saying this to yourself, I wouldn't wish him a happy birthday. If you wish him a happy birthday, that means the door's open. That means, hey, I don't want you in my house, but if you come by, I left the key under the mat. That's what that sounds like. Um, so it sounds like you miss him. It sounds like you want him back. It sounds like you want him to change. Um, so I would call him and wish him a happy birthday. You're single. I don't know if he is. But I would wish him a happy birthday and see where things go. It seems like you guys are very compatible. Uh, it seems like they're very small things that you guys need to work out. I mean, in this day and age, you, you, you see so many people that are single that can't find somebody or if they're in a relationship, they break up. It's usually something big, you know, where, you know, he put hands on her or somebody cheated or um, disrespect, yelling, uh, or whatever it is, a zillion and one reasons why people break up or they can't get along or they can't keep a relationship together. This doesn't seem like that. This seems like it, it could be something smaller. You want deeper conversation. You want somebody that has more of a plan. Uh, those things, I think, can be fixed. Uh, and that maybe not by him, but maybe you taking a lead and fixing them. Um, I think with, with our relationship, things that I slack on, she picks up. Things that she slacks on, I pick up. Um, I don't necessarily try to change her. She doesn't try to change me unless it's something that's detrimental to my life or something detrimental to her life. Gia knows who I am and what I like and the things that make me go or the things that make me tick. Um, so she makes sure she's there for me for that. I know Gia's not in the cars. I know Gia's not into a lot of the things that I'm into, but she stands by my side regardless. She knows that I don't care about Ray Dunn as much or I don't care about 
<laughs> um, you know, a stab at you, Ben. It was. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not into, you know, picking fabrics and colors and couches and carpet and co- colors of paint and wallpaper and all the designing, all the design, doing even, for our, even our reality shows, house. you know, I watch it because I love spending time with her. I'm, I'm just not going to, he is fronting. Let me finish. F-R-O-N-T-I-N-G. I'm not going to kick back. F-R-O-N-T-I-N-G. Hey, that's that. F-R-O-N-T-I-N-G. Or does it go back this way? Okay, F R O N T I N G. Okay, what I you mean enjoy is, the hell no, out of the Bachelor. I, yeah, Real Housewives of Salt Lake but City. But let me explain. Real Housewives of Atlanta. I started watching it because of you. If if you're not home, I don't turn on the Housewives show. I turn on my sports because I it turn won't on, fight. I turn on HGTV. I'll turn on old episodes of Million Dollar Listing. I turn on the things that I enjoy. I watch basketball. I watch baseball. I watch football. But gears into these reality shows and I, at first i used to never watch it when she watched it i would leave the room or i would go to sleep or i would get on my phone but i started watching it because i'm like she likes it let me get into it now i like it i actually enjoy it something i would never in a million years gear has been watching the bachelor for 19 years something like that <laughs> this is last year was the first year i started watching it yeah mm-hmm. you know same thing with housewives of atlanta same things with uh, uh, a lot of these how I, I never was into it. i was like all right whatever but now watching it with her it's great because I get to go back and forth and we feed off each other about the things that's happening in the show. That's what makes it so great. Not just the show, but the fact that, you know, we can talk about a topic and bring it to you guys and make jokes and make a laugh and argue and fight about it and joke about it and make love after. That's the reason why I love it. <laughs> but those are the things I would never be a part of before, but I find myself enjoying it because my spouse loves it. So I would say reach out to him and see where it goes. It seems like you still want to be in that relationship. Give it a shot. Give it a try. You only live once. See what happens. She said that she's in a good space. She's happy being single and she doesn't actually want him back. Correct. She was explicit about that. Um, Everybody says that. Um, I don't want him back. I don't need him. <laughs> but should I call um, her for a birthday? But like, she's an an- <laughs> <laughs> but she's an, an- she's an anonymous emailer. So there's really no reason for her to tell an untruth. No, nah, be- she's anonymous. She said her name. Her name is... From the UK. But nobody, like, we don't know her. So there's no reason for her to tell an untruth. So if she says that, I think that she's probably in that mental space and really doesn't, she's not um, meaning for him back. She probably is happy being single just the way that she said. Um, I'm still stuck on if you've never had a bigger cheerleader and the mm-hmm. attraction is insane and that's what always drew, drew you guys back together and you enjoy his company and he's mm-hmm. fun and everything just seemed so wonderful mm-hmm. in her description of their relationship. Um, so I'm just going to assume that the things that drove them apart were significant enough um, to leave them in a place where they're not together. Okay, there's that. Regarding wishing him a happy birthday, just because they're not together doesn't mean that she doesn't still have that love for him. She said she fell in love with him, I think, on their first conversation or their first date. She said something like that, right? Um, wow, that's that's amazing. I, I don't know. I feel like that's... That, I don't know. I felt something when you were reading that email. But if that's what they shared, yeah. I mean, if you guys parted ways... And it was pleasant and it was just like, you know what, we're better off not together, but I still have love for you. If it's his birthday and he played a significant role in your life and you appreciated whatever it was that he did contribute to your life, yeah, I say pick up the phone and wish him happy birthday. Um, It doesn't, now, if you really don't want to be with him when he says, all right, well, can I come over later? Say, no, that's not what this is about. You're in control of your body. Unless and, you want. And your actions. And if that's really what you don't want, then you say, no, I just really wanted to make sure that, you know, you're enjoying your day. And I wanted to know that that's my hope for you. And, you know, maybe a little conversation and whatnot. And then you say goodbye and feel good about saying goodbye. I don't think that um, wishing someone a happy birthday is the request for a beauty, a booty call. It can be, especially if, if this is what they do. It doesn't have to be. But this is what they do. I mean, and maybe that's what she wants. And then you see how the conversation plays out. If mm-hmm. it's playing out in that direction, you can pump the brakes on that. It doesn't have to be that. You are in control of yourself. No one's going to trick you into their bed unless right. you want to be there. So I say wish the man happy birthday. It seems like he was wonderful to you. Yeah. And if 
you feel like getting back with the brother on his birthday, there's nothing better for a birthday than vagina. Okay. <laughs> okay, Rashawn, I, I checked the time. We do have somewhere to be. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about maybe 10 minutes before we have to leave. We could pop these mics off and hop in the car. So let's try to do one more email. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, this is something quick and fast. Hey, Gia, could you please give me your perspective perspective on having a planned sex schedule in a marriage? My Ooh. husband and I have been married for three years, and we have a scheduled sex since the beginning of our marriage. Since the beginning? Yeah. Okay. Did thanks. she say how old she is? No. Okay. She just said thanks and can't wait to hear your opinion. Ramando. Ramanda. Warren. Hmm. Okay. Is that it? Yep. All right. There's um, pros to that and there's cons to it. Some people have to schedule sex in their relationships because life can get very, very hectic, mm -hmm. especially if you're dealing with two working people, number one. Now, if you complicate it and you're talking about two working people with children, forget about it. By the end of the night, it is very feasible that you have two people that get into the bed and drift right off to la la land. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they don't love you. It's not because they don't want you. It's not because they're not attracted to you or don't desire you. It's because the sleeping gods are calling them and they have no control over staying awake. But if you have it on a schedule, like we have sex Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or only on Fridays, or Saturday and Sunday when, you know, it's not about getting the kids to school and the priority isn't giving them a bath. You know, it might be like, oh, it's tomorrow's Sunday. Think of their bath in the morning. Let's, let's go to the bedroom or whatever. So if you can find days in your schedule where being intimate can be the priority because you can kind of bleep off some of your obligations or you just, you're mindful about it, then I think that that just might be the way that it has to be. Is it the most romantic? Maybe not. Is it the sexiest? Maybe not. But if it's the only way that you can get it in, then I think that that's the route that you go. I think that we all prefer for um, lovemaking to take place when you feel it and when things are really sexy and when he just might be wearing that fill in the blank or she just might be wearing that fill in the blank when it's spontaneous, doesn't always have to be home. It could be when you're out, it could be in the car, it could be while he's driving, it could be, you know, not that that's the safest thing, but you know, whatever. Um, and not actual sex, but you know, other things that can take place while he's driving. But anyway, you know, it's nice when you engage in sex when it just, when the feeling just kind of comes over you. But I think that it just doesn't always happen that way. And for some people, if you're always waiting for when that feeling comes over you and when you have the time and opportunity, three weeks can go by and you may not have sex. But if you say, all right, well, it's Friday night. I know what's going to happen tonight. You go into Friday knowing that you're making that mental and emotional and physical space for that to happen later on that night or in the afternoon or whenever it is that you plan it. And then it happens and it's satisfying and it's gratifying and it's done out of love and there's no harm, no foul. So I think that it is okay if it's necessary. Now, if there's nothing else um, interfering in your life, preventing you from having sex on a regular basis, if there, it's not a, about being tired from work, if it's not about kids, if it's not about any other external issues and you feel as though the desire and the attraction, the chemistry is off, but yet you guys are planning sex, then there's something wrong with that. But if you're left without too many options and that seems to be what you guys have come to, then I think it's fine. Okay. I, I, I agree with Gia to a point. Um, I'm not a scheduled sex type of person. Uh, I think that's like telling a comedian to tell a joke right now. Mm. Um, Good analogy. I just don't want to be like, okay, it's Saturday at 8 p.m. Whip your dick out. Like that's, that's not me. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a vibe type of person. I need to feel a vibe. Um, I like to feel sexy. I like my wife to feel sexy. I like for it to be a mood. It's been more difficult now when I have 
uh, a triple in our room. <laughs> we have a triple. A triple. That's <laughs> Gia, me, and um, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's a lot difficult now, but I, I don't. I, I mean, personally, I get what Gia's saying, and I agree totally. You know, sometimes you have to because of your kids, your situation. You work, you work, but you you know, um, you, get, you need that connection. Um, but it, it would be more difficult. It just doesn't feel sexy. Um, it doesn't have to be. It's Friday, ten p.m. Whip your bleep out. It doesn't have to be that. I think that you would come to this scheduled day and let's say it is Friday at 10 PM because that might be the time where life isn't pressing. But you know, let's, you know, let's that say every Friday be, you do a 10. That might be Friday. You know, we don't have to wake up for work in the morning. The kid's bedtime is 930. This is when we're able to let our hair down. Mm-hmm. So this is just when we know that we're going to be able to engage each other. But let's say Friday at 10, I might, Friday might've been a tough day. I might've been working all day. So let's say you're waiting for, for Friday at 10 because this is our time, but I'm tired. I had to work. I had to do this. I had to do that. So now I get home and you're like, all right, this Friday, this Friday, this is my day. I'm about so to- So if there's a glitch in the schedule. I'm gonna bust it for, I'm gonna bust it for a goon. And then your goon is <laughs> like, fuck it that. for a goon. <laughs> right. And your goon uh-huh. is thing. So, I mean, that's, that's the only thing, but I agree with you. When, when life is like that, I, I think it is time, sometimes that you should schedule a connection. Uh, I I just doesn't work with me. But it doesn't have to be as callous as the way that you described it. It can just be like we've we came to that day because that is the day that organically we're able to engage each other. Okay, Do you know what I mean? Right. I get what you're saying. All right. I I think uh, we should try. Try what? I think every Tuesday, you better drink a Red Bull or something. I'm not saying I I want schedules. No, no. I think every Tuesday at (laughs) six. Fifteen, you should give me a head. What's going on on Tuesday at six fifteen, Rashawn? Oh, you got about ten minutes, and then you got to so I'm stretching your jaw. <laughs> but you know, like Gia said, so I mean, I think that is pretty good that you guys should remain on that that schedule and, and uh, main connection, and let us know how it works out. We would love to hear from you guys. <laughs> the Casey Crew at Gmail dot com. T H E E Casey Crew at Gmail dot com. Don't forget. Subscribe to our podcast. Uh, every week, we're sending out some stuff to people, whether it's some socks, some uh, mugs, some wine glasses, some hats, something we're going to send part of our Casey crew just to say we appreciate you guys. All right. Now it's time to get up out of here, and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. We'll if see you're next not week. subscribed, subscribe now. That's right. I'm DJ Envy. And I'm Gia Casey. And that was another edition of the Casey crew. Doodles. <laughs>